It's time for another episode of MILF Manor by Popular Demand. Okay, my ear popped when I just said demand. I don't. Did that sound weird out loud? Probably not. Actually, it's gonna be at least like two episodes of MILF Manor you're getting today because I uh, made it through the third episode and honestly, it was pretty bland, my dude. So I just dove right into to episode four and figured we'd we'd bundle up a little bit. A little back to back, a little Milfenheimer, if you will. I know that doesn't actually make sense or work, but we're going with it. So hopefully this is still fun. We're just gonna be shaking up the format a little bit, um, but uh, I have found out something about the show that I thought was interesting and I'll share with you. We've all kind of noticed that the sun's energies in this, is just, it's a little bit weird. Like most of them don't seem like they were actively looking for older women in the same way that the moms were absolutely looking for the younger men. But as I've exhausted, they absolutely knew they were gonna be here at the same time. What's going on? Wait, there are moms? Like you're just not gonna end up on a reality show in a different country while your mom is just also on a reality show in the same different country without like, talking about that a little bit. Well, people have done some digging and found a post by one of the casting agents of the show, and I'll be damned if this is not the description of Milf Manor. Are you a single mom? Do you keep yourself fit and fabulous and enjoy dating much younger men? Does your 20-something-year-old opinionated single son want to help you find love too? Our mother-son duos will go on a fun dating retreat and help each other find love. So I think there was a really good chance that these kids showed up here assuming that like they were going to be finding dates for their moms and like maybe there'd be some like other younger dating pool members for them uh, only to find that they were the dating pool which I believe is kind of clearly underlined in that but I, I could see how it would slip under the radar you know they're looking for single sons for a dating adventure either way always nice to get some of that insider information it looks like she is now on the hunt for older single men uh, and a group of sisters Goody! I wonder I wonder how that one's gonna shake up. Just get it out of the family! Wait, isn't there already like a very weird dating show about like families getting way too close? I I can't, I don't know. They they're all they're all weird. They're all here and they're all somehow real. Again, none of these has been more shocking to me than claim to fame being an actual show. I think your celebrity relative is Tom Hanks. It is Tom Hanks. <laughs> Damn. It's but just to give a quick little recap as to where we left off, Kelly is flipping out at people for speaking Spanish because she assumed that they were trash talking her, which of course just led to them trash talking her. Maybe she is self-conscious, insecure, I don't know. Which instantly just derailed the entire budding relationship between her and Jose because, you know, Jose ain't gonna put up with that treatment towards his mom. Also, yeah, she's just clearly very insecure. But diving back in while the Kelly stuff did get pretty intense, the real big drama from last week was So Young revealing that she'd slept with her son's best friend. You over here! Smash him up! <laughs> Look, I know we were taking shots at him for the weird foot stuff, but I feel bad for the dude. Because it just led into an entire mental breakdown in Jimmy, culminating in him swimming in the nude. Oh my god, are you in the nude? Oh my god. How are you feeling? It's nothing, it's nothing. You're in your own reality and I'm in mine. Right? You know, at first I thought that Charlene was probably just being like really sympathetic towards him, but you know, after some of the stuff uh, we're gonna see going forward, I'm kind of wondering if she was trying to like swoop in there and be like, you know what, you know how we'd get back at your mom? If if we, if we? So, you know, I don't, I don't know anymore. The most shocking secret for sure was Jimmy finding out his mom his best friend. Yeah, you think? This is after he copped to getting pink eye for eating as so rough episode for Jimbo that we're leaving off on that will undoubtedly affect his dating prospects going forward. Remember when we looked up if that was possible? Yeah, and a little special thank you to today's sponsor, Surfshark, for always being available to help conceal the many unusual things I have to look up for this channel. There's just certain things you absolutely do not want affecting your search result algorithm, and that was definitely one of them. Surfshark VPN allows you to conceal your IP address and make your internet think you're in a different location, which comes with a lot of benefits. I use it constantly to access streaming services that aren't available in Canada like Hulu or to use it to access accounts I'm paying for in Canada when I'm away in other places. Without Surfshark, I wouldn't have been able to watch the finale of The Last of Us and that would have been a tragedy. All I had to do was connect to a Canadian server location while I was in the States and I was good to go. They have thousands of different server locations all around the world so you can take advantage of region lock 
product content from around the globe with ease. It's super fast, secure, blocks unwanted ads, and if you're not completely satisfied, they offer a 30-day back money guarantee. So make sure to click the link in the description down below to check out Surfshark for yourself and use code JEDI to get an additional three months free. But it's really hard to say how much that'll affect things because the maturity level in all these people is just kind of all over the place and getting quite subterranean and not necessarily from the younger people that you would expect it from. Some of the guys here I like very immature. Yeah, no shit, Paula. It's because some of them are literally fresh out of high school. You really can't compare Ryan, who is 30, a whole ass adult with a fully developed frontal lobe to the 20 year old. But yeah, I gotta say that some of them are quite a bit overly immature for their ages. Uh, was shocked to find that Jimmy was 26, but yeah, Ryan probably barely made the cutoff point for this arrangement considering they were looking for sons in their 20s. I have this feeling that he was probably 29 when they started the application process. But yeah, Jimmy gets a little bit of a break because the most immature person this episode seemingly, at least so far, is Gabriel, who is 23. So he's kind of on, on the cusp, you know? Still a little bit of frontal lobe development to go, but you'd think he'd be a little bit more mature, but no. What happened? I'm not seeing what Stephanie's seeing in him. Again, Gabriel being Walmart, Sid Vicious, and he really does kind of give that that attitude out there where I think he's, he thinks he's being this like carefree person and somehow it's working for Stephanie, but it really just comes across as like immature child. Like, you know that, that scene in Twilight when they're like, ooh, it's a worm. And everyone's like, oh my God, like no wonder I'm in love with the vampire that wants to kill me. All of these boys are children. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. So I have no idea why Stephanie is into it. Like he is acting like a high school student and she is, she's on board. I've never dated anyone like Gabriel. He's stylish, he's spontaneous. I am excited to see what God has in store for us. Ma'am, again, there is just no God here you need to stop what do you like about me your vibe he's very funny outgoing he just says it how it is it's the energy i love your eyes <laughs> again i just love how the women are like yeah you know i like someone who's like outgoing someone who can do things that are fun and like these like innate traits and then they're like yeah, you know, like, I, just, I love your eyes and like your body is like so tight. And it's not just that they say it because it's one thing if you want to say like, oh my God, yeah, like physically you're also my type. But it's like right after they've said something like semi insightful about an inner quality trait that they're just kind of like, yeah, my type is like a booty. Again, the maturity levels here are just so mismatched. But I guess if you like openly agreed to going on a dating show to date, you know, young 20 year olds when you have young 20 year old sons, um. Who cares about maturity levels? But yeah, again, just mostly such goofy behavior here. Like they're on some kind of like bug eating date, which I'm not down for. I do not care. N no, no thank you. So he's just like messing around with the bugs. That's what you get for asking my mom on a date. I just feel like with most women, most women, there would not be a bigger turnoff in the world than your date playing with bugs. Even if they're intended for you to be eating, no, this is gross. Like there's no way you're this desperate, Stephanie. But the drama will quickly take a little bit of a turn here because little Joey here is on a date with Gabriel's mom and Gabriel's not cool with it. She's trying to hit on my mom and it's not sitting right with me. It's not sitting pretty. No one dates budget Sid Vicious's mom. Even though, come on man, it's gonna be someone. Might as well be the 20 year old that doesn't look like he's felt the warm embrace of a woman that isn't his mother. That boy better watch out. I'm gonna be his papa one day. I absolutely love it, what a delight. That's the attitude we need. We need step parent energy in this shit show. God, Joey's just so awkward. I just, Joey is such like a little child that I could not imagine a mom wanting to date him and like feeling comfortable doing anything intimate with him without it just instantly reminding them of their sons because he's just, he's just this little like, little adorable little dude, you know? He's like, I get that he's 20. You know, that's an adult, but he's just a little baby. It's just, it's weird. Like, it seems like the type of guy that might try to hit on older women at the club and then the older woman would be like, <laughs> okay, no, thank you, you're sweet, but no. <laughs> or, you know, they should do that. But yeah, pretty soon Gabriel is gonna start thinking like everything is a personal attack on him because Ryan's gonna start making moves on Stephanie now too. I think Stephanie is just naturally sexy and extremely well put together. But Gabriel thought he was in with her, like they were playing with 
bugs. They were having a good time. He got to show off his macho bravado against another man trying to date his mom. Like he thought he was in the clear. And then Ryan, all suave, just has to swoop in. Because Ryan really did mean it when he said he was going to be exploring everyone of interest. Obviously, I got to keep it moving. Um, it's like the McRib and McDonald's, you know, like limited time only. You. <laughs> no, we get it kind of sucks. You've like staked your mark and it looked like Ryan was into someone else. And then here he is scamming on the woman you want. But Gabriel kind of starts treating it like someone stealing his toy. As if Stephanie isn't an adult, they can make her own decisions. Like if she was so into you, she wouldn't be entertaining Ryan. Would you like to go slow? Yeah. Oh, you and I? Oh, you, yeah. Okay. Tom. No hesitation. Which is when we get to Billy. But he's either the most awkward lacking game person in this scenario, or he is just messing with people. I've been told I'm a very good kisser. Would you like to test it out? Absolutely no game here. He literally tried kissing her with a carrot in his mouth. You got food in your mouth. Billy's cute, but um, his game is super weak. No game, which Kelly agrees with, is not remotely enamored by this until... They don't really have the right size condoms for me here. I think it's hot when a guy is so confident about his size of his penis. You're telling me all it took, all it took for you to be into this guy who tried kissing you with a carrot in his mouth was for him to imply that maybe he was slightly more than averagely endowed in the downstairs department. Ma'am, please, why? Oh my God, that also that does not imply that they have a wild side. That is a cringe thing to say out loud. Maybe he has this uh, crazy wild side. Is that all it takes for her? Ladies have higher standards, please. And if you thought that it couldn't get any more awkward, Guess who Kelly brings up his potential dick size to? He said he has a big <laughs> How does it make you feel? <laughs> That's right, Billy's mom. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what's happening. But hey, that brings us into this week's challenge where the mother and sons must um, choreograph a passionate dance together. Why? We want you to come up with a dance that best communicates love, passion, and desire. Is he, is he squatting? Is he squat pushing into her, her ass? This, we're coming hot off the week where he found out that she slept with his best friend and it's affected their, their, their vibes. According to him, he said it out loud. This secret really kind of like disrupted me and my mom's energy together. And now they're, the, She's said, I'm not gonna say it because it's so fucked up, but like, man, didn't you get in trouble for <laughs> for doing push-ups around that area before? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not, it's not like that. It's not like that. I'm just saying it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> Did she just say so sexy after they finished? I just, that's just certain words. There's just certain words you shouldn't use when it's a mother and son, son dancing. <laughs> just there's certain there's just certain things you don't need to say out loud. I'm just putting that out there. Okay, okay, guys. Okay. The shirt comes off and all the ladies go crazy. Oh, 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 I wonder how much I can bribe Harrison to give me a lap dance. <laughs> Look, at least she's willing to pay for the services she would like rendered. Uh, either way, uh, Charlene and, and Harris, Harrison, whatever, uh, win because he pulled off his shirt and it made the ladies go crazy. He made me hot. You know, it's all it takes. Uh, so Charlene gets to pick a date and she picks one with Jose, who again is now pretty clear for a couple of reasons. You know, he's, you know, he, he's out of favor with Kelly because she flipped out. And also uh, Ryan is not as into Paula as he was because of how close she is with Jose. So that's why he's been kind of grooving on to Stephanie. But no, 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 it's not just gonna be Ryan and Gabriel after Stephanie. Harrison wants a date with her now too. At first I'm like a little annoyed. I've kind of made my presence apparent, so I'm pretty secure in that. It sucks because we're developing a connection and that chemistry and I really had plans in my head. I just love how both of these guys are like, you know, I'm like, I'm a little bit like ouchy, a little bit ouchy, but like, I'm super confident, I'm super confident. I've laid in that groundwork, like we're doing good, but like, uh, ouchy. But don't worry, they don't really have that much to worry about here because uh, Stephanie starts asking him a couple questions, like who do you vibe with most in the house? And he says, so young, but then she's like, okay, well, who do you find the most attractive? And I, you know, you'd assume, he asked her out on a date. You'd assume it would be her, but... Who are you the most attracted to? That would be Polar. 
my guy, is this some kind of weird nagging strategy that you think it's going to get her to be more into you? I have no idea what your, what your plan was here. I don't know what's going on, but... Oh no! So yeah, not exactly a match made in heaven there, but uh, Gabriel's still a little bit threatened. What's happening? So you went on a date with Harrison. Yeah. Oh. He's a smooth guy, huh? Oh my gosh. Oh my god, that is so childishly aggressive. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, threatened. Like, it's gonna be fine, but like, hey girl, I noticed you went on a date with someone else. I do not feel threatened by Ryan. No one really has a chance in you. I think it's in the back. And honestly, buddy, I don't know about that, because, you know, Ryan went in for the kiss and he got it, so I don't know how in the bag you got it. How you feel about Gabriel? We've hung out. It's just been fun, like, more friends, I think. Ooh, you get the fun and friendly comment. It hurts. Oh, though I will say that Ryan's kind of doing the same thing. He's like, look, I'm keeping my options open. And like everybody is keeping their options open, you know? Like we didn't come in here with any connections, but now he's like, so yeah, like now that, you, now that we've been on a day, you're gonna keep, gonna keep your eyes open for me the most, right? Right? Yeah, it's gonna be a thing. Gabriel thinks he's still the deal with Stephanie. I'm obviously the choice. I just love that like Gabriel says he's confident and doesn't think he has anything to worry about. Ryan believes it. Ryan believes that he is the best choice here. And he's probably definitely one of them other than like the unabashed fuckboy qualities. But that brings us to episode four, where Gabriel seems to really ramp up the aggression, but uh, towards Stephanie herself because she's entertaining dates with Ryan. Come on, man, there's no loyalty on the manor. And Ryan isn't gonna back off Stephanie. Paula was too inconvenient for him. What's your purpose at the house? I really wanna enjoy my company. I wanna be with myself first than being with anybody else then. I want to be with Jose. What? But like, the two guys aren't wrong. Stephanie is not being very clear. She's out here telling Ryan that Gabriel's just like friend vibes, but then she's still going out and dancing with Gabriel. So it's like very, she's playing the field. And I don't know if God's gonna like that. But a new romance that might be forming is Jose and So Young. Like, he heard that story and was all like, I don't have anything to worry about. My best friend's my mom. <laughs> Wait. Jose, he's got like heights and eyes and all the style that I've been looking for. And well, I did allude to it before, and it's clear that many of the moms are, DTF will say, uh, Charlene is getting brazen. She wants to fuck. Are you good in bed? Are you a butt man? Like, what's going to seal the deal for you? Down, girl, down! I just don't jump into something, if right. that makes sense. It really has to be super important and, like, special. Oh. She's, like, so upset that this guy is like, no, I kind of, like, treat that seriously. Like, our bodies are our temples. And she's like, oh. This is not what I was led to believe young men were like. I know what my needs are, and I know they needed to be met, like, yesterday. Like, he is not vibing at all, and she is so upset about it. It's like, she's busting out that they used to call her the queen of blue balls. What are you doing? I was a above-the-waist kind of gal. I still am. I was called the queen of blue balls. Girl, I was rooting for you. What are some of, like, your hobbies? Oh boy. Like he's just like genuinely trying to get to know her and she is so bothered by that because apparently she's just by her own admission so damn horny that she needed it yesterday. And um, like, I don't know if reality television was the answer, but we're here. I know it's pretty clear that it's not okay for dudes to get aggressively sexual, but it is also definitely not cool for the ladies to do it either, especially after he's kind of made it clear that he is just not into that line of discussion. It was just so much. And it's not just Gabriel that Charlene was aggressive towards. She goes right in on Ryan and Ryan's usually like down for it. Like he took a lot of that aggression from Kelly because Kelly, even if it is also awkward, is more playful with it. But Charlene's like, are you an ass man? So many men are ass driven. Are you ass driven, Ryan? I just think a lot of men that are ass men, they're ass driven. I'll ask you some more questions later. Thank you. She is saying what she wants and she is not apologetic about it. Ass, 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 ass. So you know if even Ryan's like, you know, it's like a little bit fast for me, you know, maybe you need to bring it down. Bring it down. On the one hand, yes, yeah, she's being very open and honest about her intentions, but it is also just very good to read the room. And if someone is not giving that energy back to you, because Gabriel clearly was not, you, you pull it back. You pull it back, girl. You know, I really should have anticipated that it would be the MILFs acting up so much, but like, what can I say? Jimmy and Ryan flipped my expectations, but here we are. But apparently I spoke too soon because here's Jimmy making some moves on Stephanie and once again, right for the physical stuff. You have great skin, you have good taste. I love the anklet. <laughs> 
And I knew we were in for trouble the second he mentioned that anklet. Suck the acrylic off them toes, shove them off mouth. I love toe rings, anklets, feet, soft skin, nice legs. No, not the feet again, but like, I guess it's like not ass pink eyes. So that's an improvement. And just when we thought we were safe because Jimmy's off the screen, we got Ricky. Ricky, who seemed to be a voice of mostly sensible, going right at Janet's feet. Being honest, mm -hmm. your feet. Why? Please stop. Like, I hope maybe it was like a joke. It could have been a joke. We're laughing, we're having fun, but maybe it was like, <laughs> but for real though, the first thing I noticed, your feet. <laughs> but just joking, but like for real though. But other than Charlene's very abrupt tactics, this has kind of been getting a little bit bland, but then they shake things up. One of the duos is getting kicked off the show and this speed dating thing was a charisma test. Is it because somebody might've realized that this is a bigger shit show than they anticipated and want to make a quick escape? Or did the producers genuinely find that some people were just boring? Who knows? But I will say, it's not just Charlene that got a bit aggressive in the speed dates. Will you pull a Jimmy? Sorry? Oh, <laughs> not. Damn, it's like she heard Charlene talking and took notes. Would you ever pull a Jimmy? A Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, she is out here asking if people would pull a Jimmy, AKA eat ass. I assume she only means that part and not the subsequent getting pink eye from it, but who knows, maybe she's freaky like that. This is doing something to my brain but we're, we're, we're gonna keep going. Like that is her go-to question with all these guys. What makes you experienced enough? Are, are you talking about sexually yeah. or just everything? Sexually. Sexually, I haven't had a, like as much sexual experience as you. Called that, called that. I didn't know she was coming on like that with you. She, she did it to everyone. What? You know it's bad when Kelly's like, I can't believe she said that. You know, Kelly, who asked a mother if their son's dick was actually large. You know, if you're crossing her boundaries, like you gotta bring it back a little bit. It just kind of makes me feel bad for Joey because he's, he's 20 and he looks so young. He's like a little baby face. Like I look at that and I see child. So I just can't imagine how any of these older women who have teenage sons, who still have younger sons, could ever look at him as anything other than a like, Oh, let's pinch your little cheek. You're so cute. Are you in college now? <laughs> no. Like Paula comments that he's like a kid when she's asking him questions, but I don't think it's just his method of answering them that makes him come across like childlike. It was a disaster. Lo sentí era un niño, entonces traté de, de preguntarle muchas. He literally annoyed Paula so much that she rabid ranted in her native language. Now I do need to take another detour with Stephanie because this whole thing is that you're kind of going on these speed dates with people you haven't really had a chance to interact with much. So like Jose is talking to Stephanie and she's like, well, he's handsome and super nice, but I already have so much on my plate and I'm just still waiting for God to lead me in that direction. And hopefully soon I will find out. Ma'am, you know, it's like that whole thing with the like, God sent the boat, God sent the plane, sent the rescuer, and, and you just have to do something with what you've been given and make a choice. But yeah, I guess with the combination of people just generally finding Ricky kind of a little bit too quiet, not really speaking unless spoken to, not generating interesting conversation, I guess, and quite possibly April just being so goddamn aggressive, they get sent home. And you know what? Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, if Ricky's not really engaging, but I will say anytime I did hear him say something, it seemed to be pretty reasonable, but this show can't have reasonable. Though again, I still believe that there is a slight possibility that they orchestrated getting them out of the show because they didn't want to be on the show anymore. If they kind of got there and realized that the sons were part of the dating pool and were like, oh shit, that's not what we were anticipating. But who knows, maybe they really were just that boring. But hey, at least they got a nice vacation out of this. They got to keep their dignity intact. Will you pull a Jimmy? Yeah, you know, you know other than that. I think I got a low score because I came off very reserved. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, they wanted to go home for sure. There's no chance that she thought that that speed dating stuff was chill and reserved. A Jimmy? <laughs> but who knows, maybe she just meant everything up until that point. Maybe she thought that that was how she was gonna stand out and be flashy, but maybe she was just really on a mission for that dick. I am so sorry. Either way, they go home. I guess it was kind of unanimously felt that they didn't make an effort to integrate with people or talk or whatever. They didn't really make an effort to really like connect, connect with anyone else 
Giles. Oh, he didn't want to be I, there. They didn't want to be there. But that didn't end the episode. Shockingly, we got some time for more drama, like literally half an episode's worth. Ryan is very bothered that Stephanie said that he was her favorite, but here she is swinging with Gabriel. Also, he's out there like smoking while swinging with her. That's just crazy. Gross, man. Ugh. If you're telling somebody that they're just a friend and they know their position, then why is he moving the way he's moving? Yeah, man, I get it. You know, at first, like, yeah, we're playing the field. We're trying to figure out who we like. But, you know, at this point, Ryan has made his intentions clear and he thought that she was on the same page as him. I can understand why this behavior is coming across as unpleasant towards him and maybe he should just go back to Paula. But instead of doing that or trying to deal with this in a mature way, he tries to manipulate the situation. Like I get it, every time you try to have some like one-on-one -on -one time with Stephanie, Gabriel pops up because it makes sense. He's interested in her. She has not clearly stated to him that she just sees that as a friend vibe because again, she's still waiting for the Lord to guide her. But he ends up pulling like a, hey, I'm gonna get up for the sunrise tomorrow. If you can't get up and make it out, with me, you have to go 24 hours without talking to Gabriel. Gabriel can't come in your room for one solid day. Because <laughs> either way, in his mind, this results in him getting his one-on-one -on -one time. But she rightfully finds that a little bit manipulative. Right now, I feel a little pressured by Ryan. I think it could be a little bit manipulative. See, man, it's just not confident. Like, you're 30. Don't play games. Just say straight up, like, I would like to go on a one-on-one -on -one date with you where Gabriel can't intrude. You did it once. You brought her snorkeling. You got the kiss. Do it again, man. But rounding back to the Wang gang, which is, I guess I don't know why I chose to call Billy and Kelly that. Yeah, uh, Billy brings Kelly back to Paula and Jose's room to use their hot tub. Like, what would you do at the end of the day if you wanted to go to sleep and then like Kelly and Billy are just making out in your tub? I'm getting a little bit bold. I don't think there's gonna be that much action. It's pretty, like you're all like... Okay, that was a very bad guess on my part because the second Kelly got into that hot tub, she just dove on him. I'm really hoping that I get to see if his size of his is real big. Oh no. But for whatever reason, Paula and Jose's hot tub isn't quite working. So he brings her back to his suite. You know, the one he shares with his mom, who then stops by and just joins them. Yeah, they're just getting like steamy in the steam room. And then Stephanie's like, I'm not letting her corrupt my belly. I'm gonna go in there. No, no, no. no. Really? In our sauna? Don't you have your own room? Well, I don't know what's going on anymore. Like, yeah, I get it. Maybe you don't like Kelly that much, but your son is like in his late 20s at this point. I think he was like 26, maybe 28. Either way, you were playing like two dudes right now. So maybe just like pay attention to your own shit for a bit. And then things just kind of get really weird. So Kelly is gonna spend the night with Billy, which whatever, but I guess that because Billy and Gabriel hang out a lot, Gabriel's always in the room. So he's just like crawling on into bed with Stephanie. <laughs> Crazy. It's just really weird. Like, don't tell Ryan one thing, then act a completely different way with Gabriel and keep him in the dark. And obviously she has to tell them that she's supposed to be waking up at 5 a.m. and they both think it's like pretty controlling, which it is. But again, Gabriel's not handling it the best. No, what do you- Turn off uh, so many winners here. How can these women contain themselves? She's basically left picking between I'm gonna throw a tantrum controlling and I think I'm being suave controlling. And honestly, I think you can work with suave controlling a little bit better. And obviously she doesn't wake up and Ryan still thinks he wins because he thinks he's gonna get a full day with her, but I'm sure that's just gonna, that's just gonna be totally normal and not at all dramatic. Which leads into our final reveal. There's a replacement duo. So it's either that April and Ricky really did want to leave and that's why they weren't making an effort to like integrate <laughs> Into the, into the crowd, or the show wanted this other duo in particular and couldn't confirm them in time or they couldn't make it on the show in the regular run. I don't know, but I kind of think maybe because the replacement is kind of a celebrity. You know, not the level of like Scarlett Johansson, but above like the people on claim to fame. And who is that duo? Find out next time on my next coverage of MILF Manor. But yeah, overall, my initial concerns are all coming true. Like things are getting exceedingly uncomfortable between parent and child. Everyone is heavily immature. There's a lot of insecurity going around. Some of the women are saying like the wildest shit and think they're fine to do so, but uh, maybe not quite to that level. Most of the dudes are acting like teenagers except for like two of them. And, and then there's Harrison, who's basically just a golden retriever. Like, man, why would you ask someone on a date and then talk about other women? In. But that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments section down below. Uh, we'll see how the next episode shake out, whether or not I kind of do two in one or go back to individual episodes. Who knows? We're having fun here. It went a little, it got a little bit of a lull, but we we might be spicing back up with a new duo. Thank you all.
all so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. All my other social medias are listed down below if you're interested. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay, and we'll catch you all later.